I lived in Jacksonville, Florida. My father worked for the Navy. He was not in the military, but worked for the Navy uh, at the base at the Navy station in Jacksonville, Florida. That is a spot where they decided to intern prisoners of war. They took the Japanese prisoners and they, they camped they, they camped out. They were in tents. Uh, as, as you would go into the base, their, their, their tent encampments were on both sides of the fence on, on each side. And they had put big barbed wire on the top of the, of the fences. It, it was, uh, I used to go on the base quite frequently. And it was, it was quite an experience to travel. They used to threaten to leave me with the Japs whenever I was a kid. Um, little, little fear technique going on. I know that the United States was trying to be the first in space and that Russia was of course the competition. At, th at that time China had, I don't believe, had any interest in the space race but um, Russia ultimately beat us into space but then we were able to land a man on the moon and uh, posted our flag and laid claim to that property. So, um, yeah, I used to, matter of fact, we lived in Miami and from the Cape where they made all the launches, we could watch, we could go out in the backyard and, and watch the, the rockets go up into the air from Miami all the way up to the Cape. So it was, um, Pretty exciting every time that when it still is every every time they launch a, one of the big rockets, uh, it's it's quite an exciting thing, and just about anywhere in the state of Florida, you can see the launch. It was it was a spy plane. We we used it. That aircraft was designed. If I happen to be stationed in Puerto Rico uh, during the late 50s early 60s and we had a squadron of u2s on that base uh, quite a unique aircraft that it had a center wheel in the fuselage and a tail wheel but it had no wheels and single wheel front and back had no wheels on on the wings so in order to maintain the balance at, at takeoff they had portable hangers that went on the wing tips that had the wheels on it and as the aircraft took off those hangers and the wheels would fall to the ground and then the aircraft would go about a hundred yards and then it'd go straight up and they used to do their missions at somewhere around 80 90 thousand feet which is um, up, up there right on the edge of, of space. The Bay of Pigs was during the Cuban crisis. It was supposed to be an invasion that started, was posted in South Florida and then of, co of course they were attempting to bring Castro into power <clears throat> and get rid of, rid of a treacherous uh, dictator named Batista. Uh, and ultimately they were successful of, with it, but the United States reneged. So we didn't gain favor because of the Bay of Pigs. The Russians instead did, did and as a result, with the Rust Russian affiliation, it became a communist country, um, again, led by a dictator, Fidel Castro. The Berlin Wall was a wall in Berlin, Germany, that separated the communist side from, from us. And there was literally a wall that was probably 20 or 30 feet tall, made out of concrete, 
and there were guards on each side of this wall that prevented you from going from one side of the country to the other. Uh, at, at the end of the Cold War, of course, Reagan was able to, to go there and, and the phrase, tear down this wall, is something that he coined and, and they did. Ultimately, they destroyed the wall and then you could go from east to west Germany uh, without any problem. The Cuban Missile Crisis it was a result of the Russians gaining favor with Fidel Castro in his new regime. Uh, they started building uh, sites, missile sites, which were, they would call it defensive sites, but they literally, they were in our backyard. They were, they, they were right at the tip of South Florida. So, we then built an embargo and we, we forbid their ships to go into Cuba and, and stop that and as a result we were able to, uh, to stop their construction of the sites. Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, is the one that signed the bill for the interstate highway system. So the interstate highways that we travel on today and think nothing of, except whenever you're in Orlando and, and you can't get through there, uh, he is the one that passed the, the legislation to build the interstate highway system. So at the beginning, at the end of the 50s, at the beginning of the 60s, that's when the construction started on the interstate interstate highway system. You know, I think everybody in the, in the world that you might talk to or ask would remember exactly where they were whenever Kennedy was shot. Of course, he was shot in, in Houston, Texas, uh, riding in the back of, of a Lincoln Continental presidential car convertible uh, I was I was on my way to work when that happened I was I was going down 27th Avenue in Miami turned on to 62nd Street which is where my offices were and um, as as I was about to turn in to my office parking uh, that's when I heard that and I'll tell you, if, if you care anything about this country, whenever you hear that the President of the United States was shot, it stops you for a moment. It, it, it'll really make you draw a deep breath. He was, he was probably one of the most liked presidents that we've had in, in, uh, in, my, general, in my lifetime. You know, the frightening thing that one of the facts that you probably won't read anywhere is that the bear, Mother Russia, uh, which is what we referred to her as, as during th those communist days of the Soviet Union, they pretty much controlled all the nuclear weapons within the Soviet Union. Soviet Union, Russia, uh, Hungary, Poland, all the Scandinavian countries that were tied into the Soviet Union, they all had nuclear weapons stationed at, at bases in different strategic locations. At the end of that period, whenever the, the treaties were signed, and they disbanded the Soviet Union, then all of these nations ended up still in having these nuclear weapons. So the, the nuclear test ban, or the treaty, and, and the, the stopping of any testing of nuclear weapons was, uh, was a very important time in our, in our 
I'm sure he did. In our world. During that period of the Cold War, um, and uh, Cold War, nuclear threats, people in this country were building bomb shelters in order to be able to survive the nuclear attack that might be put on by the Soviet Union. The, um, if you didn't have a bomb shelter and, and those Russians came in and attacked our country, um, you just fried up nice and crispy, that's all. It's, it was something that, it's almost like a fire drill. because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film. I remember when a, when a very good friend of mine, I was stationed in the Air Force at, at, at um, Ramey Air Force Base in Puerto Rico. And my, my buddy came up to me one afternoon and he said, do you have any money to invest? And I said, I've got some money, what are we going to invest in? And he said, a friend of mine has developed a new copy machine. It's called Xerox. And the initial issue is a dollar a share on, on his new invention. And I, <laughs> in all my brilliance, I said, a Memorex machine? A... No, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in, in investing in that. Well, you do the math. It, it, 1,500 shares at a dollar a share whenever I was 18 years old. Um, if it was maintained all these years, would be in the billions. So, um, I, was, I was pretty bright. All, all throughout my, my life, I've, I've seen these, these things that somebody have concocted that has made millions of dollars and and it, we, we still experience that today. You, you talk to one of your friends, he comes up with an idea. Um, you don't think the idea is worth listening to, and yet he goes on and becomes a, um, the head of, of Apple or IBM. His name's Steve Jobs or yeah, it goes on forever. Um, Facebook, I mean, yeah. who's going to use Facebook? Well, only a billion people, so. <laughs> exactly. well, let me tell you about the 1950s and 1960s. B beyond all of that other stuff that goes on every day, rock and roll. That was the era of rock and roll. Start out with Bill Haley and the Comets and Elvis Presley and the Chantels and the, uh, it's incredible. More one hit wonders during that period than you can ever imagine. One hit wonders. They come out with one song. It, it, it's number one on the records. You never hear from that group again. Um, 
today it's a, it's a little more stable in the music world. There's, it costs so much money to, to put somebody on a, on a record that uh, they normally are, are around for a while. Back in those days, you could be there for one song and gone. And cover. You think you think we might have got an A on this, huh? You never know. Maybe maybe I'm gonna be a movie star now. No, didn't offer that much, huh? Eh. Yeah. <laughs>